This time we review Honda's CT125, both on and off-road. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Now the CT125 can trace its family routes all the way back to 1964 and a range of trail bikes which were developed from the original Cub, built by Honda during this period. They started out as 50, then grew to 70, 90 cc's and eventually out to 110. The 110 being a very popular bike by the Australian Postal Service. These remained in use all the way until 2008, with a few being left in service as late as 2010. Honda's been playing the retro card quite a bit recently. They introduced the monkey bike, followed obviously by the Cub, so it didn't surprise anybody that the CT125 model eventually would make an appearance. These have been extremely popular in some countries, although never really sold in the UK officially. Not surprisingly, the new CT shares much of its architecture with the Cub, the engine and chassis are pretty much the same, although interestingly the engine is slightly detuned. But the frame is essentially a Cub one, although the suspension is longer travel and the bodywork has been a little bit skimped on, so there's less to smash to pieces if you hit the road. Sensibly the bike comes as standard with some crash protection. There's a sump guard and a crash bar at the front. Aside from that, it's very similar to the Cub. But despite its humble Cub origins, the high exhaust and the even higher bars really do give the bike an off-roady feel. And this is even greatly amplified by the fact that the gearing of the machine is lower when compared to the more road orientated Cub. On the trails, the bike is extremely good, much better than you might think, and it's a real giggle. This is partially because it's light and relatively cheap compared to other trail bikes, so you don't worry too much about throwing the thing on the dirt. And even if you did, there aren't a great number of expensive components that you could damage anyway. And when you do fall over, the bike is extremely easy to pick back up and get back on the trail again. The suspension works surprisingly well and absorbs the worst of the bumps with a plomb. The engine's a four-speed gearbox, which is pretty much the same as that fixed to the Cub, although overall gearing is reduced to make it a little bit more useful off-road. The engine tune is also a little bit lower, and again, this helps the engine tug well through the dirt. The wheels fitted are quite narrow, but the knobby tyres that our bikes had on worked extremely well in pretty much any terrain that we found ourselves on. I can't really say how well they'd work on mud, because we didn't encounter any other on that day. But there was a lot of loose ground, and some sand, and the bike worked really well on all those surfaces, and nobody had any problems at all with grip. Adding to the fun factor is that high level exhaust. It provides a really nice roarty sound, and makes the bike sound much bigger than it really is. Finally we've come to the end of the trail and it's time to do a little bit of riding on road and here we can reflect on how the bike performs on tarmac. The knobby tyres worked surprisingly well and even when the road got damp later grip was uh, more than adequate I have to say. The brakes are pretty powerful because there's a disc front and rear and they work very effectively. The ride is surprisingly plush and the bike is extremely comfortable and you could probably cover quite big distances on it particularly considering that the fuel economy is extremely good and provides the bike with a claim range of about 170 miles. I doubt with any really hard riding you get anything like that, but you'd still get a very good fuel economy figure from this machine, I have no doubt whatsoever. The engine remains a peach as ever. It's very smooth, and even when you're running at quite high speeds, vibration is never really a problem. The controls are fairly typical Honda, which means they're pretty much like the controls on every other motorbike around these days. So easy to use and reliable. The mirrors work effectively, so you've got a good view all round. And overall, I'd say the bike performs extremely well on road. With one caveat, and that is the gearing. The overall gearing is lower than you find on a standard Cub. And this shows and that the machine is actually only slightly quicker than the older CT110s that it replaced. Top speed, I guess, 
is only around 55 miles an hour. You may hit 60, but I think you'd be working the bike extremely hard to get much beyond that. But with that small caveat, I have to say, this is an extremely good bike. Unfortunately, it's not available in Britain. Well, except as a grey import. Now, we test rode these bikes at Dorothy's Speed Shop down in Devon, and I recommend it thoroughly. It's a great day out, and these machines are far more fun than you think they're going to be. Overall, I have to say that this makes a fully enjoyable off-road machine. So come on, Honda, bring it to Britain. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thank you very much for watching.